This is it guys, you've been waiting for this. I listened to every comment and really made something unique. And now I'm going to tell you all about the advantages of this base. The TC in this base is protected by four walls. The TC itself is hidden behind a vending machine, which adds at least 10 more rockets to the raid. And you have to figure out that there's something behind the vending machine. Of course, this base has a bunker. And if there are four walls to the TC, then there are three to the weakest point in the bunker. I would definitely not raid something like that. Next, I put my pixel peek into this base, which hides you from all other roof campers. Agree, it will be incredibly difficult to kill someone who is shooting through textures. On the floor above, there are three combat spawns where you can stand and start defending your base. Not only is each combat spawn protected by three rockets, but you also have a pixel gap inside the base where you can spot enemies in advance and kill them at any convenient moment. And I just couldn't help but put your favorite roof peak into this base. I know how much you love it. Here you can safely shoot and even grow all sorts of things. There's a lot more to this base, but I can't wait to show you all of it from the inside. Of course, this base has a phased construction, and in total, this base base has two entrances inside. There is a flame turret near each entrance, and also, in addition to it, there is a window with wooden shutters. Here you can look not only at the environment around the base, but also use a grenade to blow up those who will be door camping you. Such tricks should definitely not be underestimated. Further, through the same flame turret, we have implemented a rise above. There is also a garage door, it is open, and a turret. Further, behind the double door, we get to the center of the third floor. Here we have an exit to the shooting floor as well as a second exit from the base. Here you can dump resources, put something on study, and so on. And also you can look into this pixel at any time. The views here are amazing. It will be very difficult to kill you in this pixel. You can also open garage doors from here that I haven't told you about before. Behind them are six turrets that protect your base around the perimeter. And when the garage door is open, you get such views. And if you hear that your turrets are starting to break, just close the garage doors and your turrets will be safe. Also, I consider the fact that this pixel does not need a new DLC skin on stone to be a very important advantage for this base. The base is built in such a way that the upper texture of the ordinary stone roof is cut off in this base. And of course I will show you how to do this. From here you can also go up to the fourth floor but we will return to it a little later. Behind the green door we have the second part of the third floor. This is done so that they cannot break all the ceilings on this floor with rockets at once. And even if they start raiding you through the doors and then start blowing up the ceiling these vending machines will break and thereby half of the loot from the vending machines will disappear. And from this side of the third floor we have two more such shooting floors. The base is built on the principle of three-way symmetry, so everything is the same everywhere. Here you can also shoot far, look under the base, and so on. And now let's go up to the fourth floor, where our combat spawn is located. These rooms are located behind the garage doors. In each of these rooms there is one bed and four small boxes. This is done so that even if all the the windows here are removed, these boxes cannot be looted from the outside. And just look at this pixel that I told you about at the beginning. Through it you can immediately see those who are running around here and kill them at any moment. Our base is symmetrical and everything is the same here, that is three spawn points and three descents down. But we have only one ascent to the fifth floor. This is done through a triangular hatch. This is the topmost part of this base, and this will be your favorite roof camping position. Here you can not only shoot, but also plant various berries to grow, and I will answer the comments right away. You can definitely reach the far cells. I know you won't believe me, so I'll show you visually. It won't work for business, of course, but it's enough to provide for yourself. And now, let's go through the lower floors of this base. Please note that garage doors are installed here everywhere. It will be very expensive to go through the doors. Before going down to the second floor, you can put a computer station. And my second floor turned out to be as comfortable as possible. Here you can cook not only gunpowder on an industrial scale, but also do various crafts, syringes, ammo, and so on. The main combat spawn in this base is also located here. There are two walls to it from the outside. On the side of it, there is another loot room, which is located behind the window. And in the far part of this floor is a bunker. You can open it only from the inside. And now I will show you how to do it. You just need to stand on the sleeping bag and break this wooden foundation. The roof will collapse due to stability. But while you are online, you can go up to the second floor in this way. You can also put a stove or a regular ladder, do as you like. I showed my solution, and to close this bunker, just put a foundation and a square roof on it. Do not leave the foundation in the twig, otherwise it will stick out through the wall. Upgrade at least to wood. But here, we also have everything for a comfortable survival. First, there is such a furnace room. To the right of it is a loot room for four large boxes. Next is a room
room with a battery and a workbench, and the farthest loot room is for the most valuable resources, and the TC itself is located behind the vending machine as I showed you earlier. You need to look into this slot and its upkeep is in front of you. For four wall protection to the TC, this is more than acceptable. This is the base that turned out with all sorts of interesting shooting floors and turrets. And you might say, Hidden Joint again built a base that only needs a flat surface. Here is the proof for you. I built this base on the mountain. If only there was a desire. If you're not a fan of building bases in the mountains, I've prepared a brand new fifth private base for you on my Patreon today. It's perfect for players who love all aspects of the game. It has four bunkers that open through Twig, lots of pixel shooting floors that you love, and huge potential for online defense. With bunkers, you don't have to worry about losing nice. your loot. For just seven to fifty dollars, you'll get access to this private base, as well as all the other content I publish there, which includes at least four more private bases for every taste. The link to Patreon will be in the description. Subscribe, you won't regret it. I always recommend that you plan the layout of your base's foundations before you start building. However, this time it is not necessary, but I will show it to you anyway so that you can immediately understand what your base will be like. I will use HQM minimally on the first floor. We will only have a square loot room and TC in HQM. Everything else can be made from sheet metal and the only high foundation should also be in HQM later and the foundation next to it must be made of twig. This is necessary for our bunker if you upgrade it, you can say goodbye to the bunker. I will temporarily leave this foundation in metal. When we get to it, I will explain why this is necessary. And now let's make our starter shack. Our starter base will have three doors, but for the very beginning, you can get by with one double door. The TC is placed in this triangle. Note, not too far, not too close. Place it in the center and close it with a single door. Now I will show you how you can arrange everything here. You will have your first workbench here, one furnace, as well as one large box and two sleeping bags. From the outside, it looks exactly like this. If at some point you feel like you need more protection, you can put another double door here. As you can see, everything is perfectly lootable and convenient to use. Once you have accumulated resources, we need to build another such room. That is, we put a door opening and build up another square foundation. It is better to make the double door open inwards. Since this is the very beginning of survival, I would initially recommend making a furnace room here in order to smelt metal, sulfur, and so on. But at the very end of your survival, this room will house the third workbench with two batteries. And from the outside, it looks exactly like this. I am upgrading it to the final version right away, but you can initially make everything out of stone. Now look, here we have an entrance and we need to build up two more square foundations. Do you feel how convenient this base is for step-by-step -step construction? Once again, I sincerely thank you for watching, liking, and commenting on my videos. Thanks to your active support, I really understand that I am on the right track and I will continue to do my best for you and I want to say a special thank you to the Patreon subscribers. Thanks to you, I can do what I do. Videos on this channel will be released twice a month, similarly on Patreon, so like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much. Once all the loot rooms on the first floor are ready, your base will look like this. You can add additional doors to the loot rooms we just made and our TC is located in the farthest corner of our starter base. I don't think many people will dare to raid this at the very beginning beginning. Now we start building up the space for our bunker, and now I will show you visually why it was impossible to upgrade that foundation to metal. In order for the roof to break here, we need to break this foundation. And logically, if you upgrade this foundation to sheet metal, then no one will want to break it later. Therefore, the maximum upgrade for this foundation is wood. Wood can be broken with one or two machetes. You break the foundation and the bunker opens. So if you want, you can already use the bunker fully at this stage. And now we simply build up the exit to the the second floor. It is better to follow the sequence I do in the video. It will be very difficult to put a ceiling for additional boxes later. We will use a twig roof to climb up to the base. I will show you visually how it is done. There should be no problems. And another very important point. If you are already closing the bunker at this stage, please note that this bunker is visible from the outside, but we'll fix that later. Look, the whole first floor is built up, but our TC is still behind one wall, so I recommend adding additional walls to it at this stage and it is better to make these walls two stories high right away so that we do not come back to this later. Also, I recommend immediately upgrading the ceilings above the TC to HQM. This will cost you 14 HQM. And from this moment, your TC is in a fairly safe place. Next look, here we have a descent to the first floor, and to the right of it, we build up two more square rooms. We put a double door opening on the exit. Here you will have a loot room as well as a combat spawn. The ceilings in this place must then be made of HQM.
them. Pay attention to how I'm building the loot room now. I put one ramp with the high side facing me and the second ramp facing away from me. Be sure to upgrade these ramps to sheet metal. This is so that if they start raiding you from that side, they can't get any further until they blow up these ramps. Next to this loot room will be our beds. It should look like this from the outside. Now be careful here, this is the entrance to our base. On the left, we put a door frame for the exit, and on the right we build another room. We upgrade everything here, using the same principle as before. As a result, you will have three mixing tables in this room. There are really a lot of doors in this base, and from the outside, it all turns out like this. Now look, see the empty foundations? We need to raise additional walls one story high around the entire perimeter of the house. I'm specifically upgrading the new walls I'm putting up to black metal so you can see right away what I've added where the high foundation can already be protected, but I'll show you how to do it at the end because you'll probably just get more confused by it. For now, we'll be using a twig roof to get to the base. And now, there are already three walls from the first floor to our TC, and the base already looks too expensive to raid. Now look, here is our second floor, and now we need to make a correct exit to the third floor. To avoid problems, it is better to follow the sequence I do in the video. Logically, the double door will have to be removed, then we will move it upstairs. Here we immediately make a blank for a future turret, but for now, it's clear that you don't have it yet. Here too, everything is upgraded to sheet metal, but the openings can already be upgraded to stone. I recommend putting a chains door in the place where our turret will be. If you put a regular double door, the turret will not fire. If you put a garage door, it can be closed. Well, you get the idea. From the outside, it looks exactly like this, but how do we get to the base now? That's what we're going to do now. Here is our entrance. We turn around. We find visually a square on the right, a square on the left. It is in this place that your entrances and exits from the base will be located. Now we go down and start building the entrance. The ascent will be realized through a square roof. Do exactly as I do in the video, because then these roofs will act as a buffer for our base. And if you do something wrong, you can ruin something for yourself. Also, don't forget that we have a turret right above the entrance. The blank for it needs to be done right now. By blank, I mean the ceiling that we put in the middle of the wall. And below, you just put a regular solo door. You should have no problem getting your butt up to the third floor. And now that we have one entrance to the base ready, we do exactly the same thing on the other side. And we even put the roof for lifting in the same way. This is a very important point which will be useful to us later. Now look, here is everything we just built. And here is our descent to the second floor. We turn away from it and begin to build up this floor in the same way as I do now in the video. Our base is hexagonal, but it is built on the principle of three-way symmetry. So there are three of these firing positions on this floor, not six. And of course, all these windows are very important for online protection, so upgrade them to sheet metal. If you don't have iron embrasures, put at least wooden bars so that no one can climb up to you. And once you put a square roof in this place, you will have a full-fledged shooting floor. However, please note that for now, the pixel, which is located right in the center, will be unavailable to us. To get it right now, you need a brutalist skin, but we will fix it later. Next, we build up, as I do in the video, the exit to the fourth floor will be from the roof and will be realized through one single door. The door frames themselves should face the soft side towards the center of the house, and so that they cannot be knocked out while you are sleeping. Also upgrade to sheet metal. And now the square that we have between the entrances to the base, we must build up exactly as we just did. There will also be pixel shooting and an exit to the fourth floor. Do not forget to put frames for double doors everywhere where they are placed on the third floor. Otherwise, stability may not be enough for some moments. By the way, square roofs serve us not only for shooting floor, they also protect the loot rooms that are located directly below them. Such a very non-obvious fact. Please note, if you put a roof and then wanted to put an embrasure, you will not be able to do it from the inside. It is placed outside, just make some kind of extension. And when the shooting floor is ready, the base looks like this. And now look, a very important point. Remember, we added black walls on the first floor, now we are raising these same walls one floor higher. For your convenience, I marked them in red. And now even the loot on the second floor has two walls. Now look, on these red additional walls that we just put up, we need to put a frame for a double door and a frame for a triangular hatch. We must do this on each side. It is in this place that the turret with the garage door will then stand. In total, you will have six such turrets. If you have any difficulties with connecting, you can write in the comments under the video. I will definitely answer. And when you're done with the turret blanks, you can make the main combat spawn on this floor. It can be left in stone or metal at your discretion. But if you are 
are going to shoot down a helicopter, of course it is better to have it in sheet metal. The most important thing that you can mess up here is this half wall at the entrance to the combat spawn. It is on it that we put a door frame for a double door and insert a garage door there. It should face inside the base and the skin on the half wall must be made of ordinary stone. Then you will succeed just like me. In this room you will have one bed and four small boxes. I don't recommend putting a large box, otherwise it can be looted from outside and of course we have three such combat spawns on this floor so we build up the remaining ones. Next, here in the center we install door frames for double doors everywhere. This is necessary for the stability of our fifth floor. In absolutely any place we add a frame for a triangular hatch and install it. Then we close everything with ceilings and upgrade to sheet metal because it's cheap. Here's a simple fourth floor for you. Next, look. Remember, we put door frames for single doors. They need to be additionally reinforced with such low ramps. They can be upgraded to any material. It doesn't matter. If you are low on resources, you can leave them in stone until the end. They are essentially only needed to make you harder to see when you shoot from this single door. And from the outside at this stage, the base looks like this. Now, let's go back to the third floor. Remember this window opening? Now, I will show you how to put two vending machines next to it. Before placing the stores, be sure to add frames here everywhere, otherwise they simply may not fit. Next, take a vending machine in your hands and install it like this. Try to make sure there is no gap between them. And now, you can put resources in them and close the whole thing with a window. Next, let's go back to the fifth floor again and put a half wall on each square ceiling. Here you can already upgrade everything to stone, because in fact you will have a farm and a shooting position here. It is unlikely that anyone will blow something up here, so I would not waste extra resources on it. Well, if you want to make loot rooms instead of this farm, then yes. Otherwise, there is no particular point. By the way, if you are going to make a farm, then it is now that you need to put these beds. Because after we make the side pixel shooting, these beds will no longer be possible to put. And when you build everything here, just install triangular roofs around the perimeter. The roofs that are directly above the shooting are upgraded to ordinary stone, and all the rest can be to any. This is necessary for such a visor to appear. For the convenience of shooting, I recommend placing campfires in this way. And that's it. Consider the shooting on the fifth floor are completely ready. If you want to make a farm for yourself, then look. First, you need to put a lamp, connect it, and only then a bed. We put the sprinkler in the center. From the other sides, everything is the same. In principle, nothing complicated. And this is how it all starts to look. We put wind turbines directly on square ceilings. Three pieces will be enough for all the electricity. Now we are starting to build a pixel shooting range. Here we need to put a triangular roof. This roof will cut off the top of the ordinary stone. But in order for you to put it here, we must first remove the embrasures. We remove the embrasures from each side of the combat spawns, and now nothing prevents us from putting such triangular roofs. We leave them in the usual skin on sheet metal. The container skin is not needed. And of course, we do this around the perimeter of our base. Look, magically a pixel has appeared even on the default stone. I told you I would show you how to do it. Now look, we must have a peak here, but it is not there yet. For it to appear, the embrasures must be on the inside. We do this on all three sides of our base. And now this position can be fully used. We check how everything works, and as you can see, I did it all. You can shoot from the left, you can shoot from the right, and everything works in the center too. But wait, I think I could also open garage doors from here, but first it would be a good idea to put them up. We put a turret in each recess of the base and close it with a garage door. Everything is the same everywhere, I will not show everything. Now the most important thing in this base, do you see these protruding triangular walls? We must put square foundations on these triangles. Let's start doing this from the bunker side so you don't get confused. Remember, I told you that you can protect this bunker at the very beginning of construction. That is, what I am showing you now can be done from the very beginning. The most important thing here is not to mess up with the placement of these square foundations. And when all the foundations are in place, everything should look like this. I'll show you an example of the bunker side. We place the roof so that they form a buffer. That is, in the direction of the protruding triangle. We must do this on each side of our base. I would recommend upgrading them to sheet metal, but if you are short on resources, then at least upgrade them to stone. But these roofs on the side of our bunker, which I put up first, it is better to upgrade them immediately to sheet metal. In order for the roofs to connect to each other, they must be made of the same material. You can really get confused here. Therefore, even if you have never built bases on creative, go and at least try to build the first floor with these roofs. If everything works out, then you can safely go into survival, because the base itself is considered to be light, and I made it completely based on your comments. We have almost
almost finished the base, but we still need to put a store next to our TC and a few more points. Look, we remove the door, take the vending machine in our hands. We turn the vending machine with the loot side towards us. Then we check that the store can easily move left and right. Once we are convinced, we pull it to the left and install it. As you can see, the TC is looted without any problems, and the doors to the TC can be put right here, despite the fact that the vending machine is already standing there. Now let's check how many walls we have to the TC, otherwise I might have deceived you. From this side to the TC we have four walls, but I showed you only one side. What about the other? Maybe things are not so good there. But even from this side to the first loot there are three walls, and to the TC still four. I hope this is what you wanted. I would like to express my special gratitude to my subscribers on Patreon, as well as to everyone else who subscribes to my channel. Thank you. Your support is very important to me. If you are not subscribed, subscribe, like, and watch my other videos. And I'm going to come up with a new house. Yes, a house, not a base. And I will use straw 